Hello there and welcome back to the channel. Today we're talking about the DJI Digital FPV system and specifically the FPV remote controller. And I'm going to show you how to convert this remote from mode two to mode one. Now I'm gonna say DJI do not recommend users do this. They sell this remote in both versions and they don't recommend you go inside to make the change. However, it is possible to do without any additional hardware and you simply swap over some control components from one stick to the other. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how to do it. However, I am also going to give you a warning as well. And that is that I do not recommend you do this unless you are 100% comfortable in what you are doing because there are a number of very small thin ribbon cables in this remote that are easily damaged. If you damage one, your remote is toast and you would have to send it to DJI for repair. Now I know this because I have ended up damaging one of those cables myself in the making of this video. Unfortunately, these things do happen when you do make videos like this and I've ended up destroying this one in making this video for you guys. So I do hope it is useful. If you'd like to support me to be able to get another one, there is a link to the DJI FPV remote in the description of this video. And if you're going to purchase the FPV kit or the remote controller, please do check it out. Anyway, let's get on with this video and show you what you need to do. Okay, to get inside the remote, the first thing you need to do is make sure your battery is removed off the back and you need to remove eight screws in total. There are two at the top here in these two holes here. There are two located below the two rubber feet at the bottom. So you will need to remove these to gain access to them. And then if you gently lift the rubber flaps under where you have the screw adjustments for the sticks, you have two additional screws located here and here and these are the ones with the big posts stick out in the rubber and there's two on that side and two on that side there so the first thing you need to do is remove all of those screws Okay, once all the eight screws are removed, the next thing you need to do is split the shell open. Now, you need to be aware that the shell actually clips in from the top into the bottom housing because your USB and headphone jack actually clip in from above. So you don't prise it open from the bottom, you prise it open from the top. However, it's worth noting in the middle here, there is a plastic clip that you need to gently prise open. So once you've got all the screws removed, you can turn it on its side and you will begin to get a little bit of movement in the shell. However, it won't actually fully unclip at this point. To get it to unclip, what you need to do is simply prise it open gently by here. Now, you can either use a screwdriver or a plastic pry tool that you get for doing some phone repairs. So what you need to do is gently apply a little bit of pressure down by here in the gap and basically prise it open gently. Now, you need to be aware when it lets go, it will release very quickly. So that is something to be aware of. So what I'm going to do is simply put a bit of pressure on there like that, very gently put the screwdriver in, give a slight twist and what will happen is once I get it in the right position it will actually begin to pop free and the housing will actually separate. Now you do need to be careful when doing it and I would suggest you have someone else with you because as you see it does open up quite lively. Once it does open up you will find that you get the inside of the remote there and then you've got the battery cable going to the back housing. Now the first thing I would suggest you do is disconnect this to stop you doing any damage and you simply put the connector down and release it and it will actually let go just like that and then you can separate the front and the back and put that to one side out of the way. Okay, so we've got the back cover removed and the next thing we need to do is transfer over the parts from the right stick to the left stick that make it actually stop self-centering. Now, the way DJI have set up the remote is that it is basically mirrored on both sides. So the right stick is currently the one that is not self-centering. So if I move it, you can see it stays in position. Whereas at the moment, the left stick is self-centering and then I leave it go, it comes back. However, all we actually need to do is transfer a few components over because the setup for them is already in place. These three components are the spring tensioner mechanism, the plastic slider which is located beneath it, and this locking screw over here. Now this screw is what pushes the spring mechanism down to prevent it self-centering. So the first thing we're going to do is remove the tensioner by removing this screw here and the two adjustment screws down the bottom. 
Once the three screws are removed, you can carefully lift off the spring tensioner, put it to one side because we will need it again in a minute. Located below this is the plastic slider. Now this is what the tensioner actually slides on. And we need to transfer this over from this side over to this side here. And it is simply held on with two clips, one on the top and one on the bottom. To undo these, you simply give them a slight press on each side and it will very carefully then pop off. And it is as easy as that. And when you turn it over and look at it inside, you can see that there's actually a groove for the edge of the rail to go into with the clips on either side. We then simply need to swap that over and put it onto this side here. Now it is a little fiddly, but if you hold the stick in place, it's a bit difficult doing it whilst on camera, but you simply locate him, give him a gentle press, and he's then popped in place ready to be used on that side there. The next thing we need to do then is refit the spring tensioner. Now this is just like it is on a normal RC and it has the two sides. You have the ratchet side with a little bump in the middle and then the smooth slider side. Now on the original side, it went that way round, but when you put it onto this side, you actually have to rotate it 180 degrees and locate it that way. So all we need to do there is pop it in, put the pins, there's a little pin on either side through the holes, and then screw in the black retaining screw. Once the retaining screw's in, you then add the adjustment screws. Now, depending on which one you want, whether you want it notched, you would tighten this side down, or whether you want it smooth, just like it was before, you would tighten this side down, but you would put both screws in, but you just wouldn't tighten the other one down, depending on which one you want. So we're gonna put it into that one there, now, putting it in for the first time might actually be quite tight because you are actually cutting the plastic for the first time as well. But take it slowly and just make sure you have a good Phillips head driver to be able to tighten it down. Now, I'm going to use a slightly larger one now on this side just so I can make sure I do get the tension correct. And then that is the spring mechanism back in place. Now, the next thing you need to do is transfer over this locking screw, which is actually located down here. And this screw pushes down the spring tensioner arm to prevent it from kicking in. So until I move that, you will notice that this one is still actually just moving loosely and it is not tensioned, whereas this one does still have the spring tension in place. So we simply take this little screw down here and remove. very carefully grab it with your fingers and then locate it into the screw location up on this side in the opposite corner. And again, as you screw this one down, it will actually push the spring lever out of the way and prevent the stick self-centering. I've now screwed that one down tight and if we now try the right hand one, you can now see that that has converted to the self-centering stick and then the left side is now a set to stay in the position. Now at the moment, the tensioner isn't actually tight enough. So what we're gonna do is tighten that one down a little bit more just to make sure we get it in the right position. And there we go. That one is now set to the other side to allow us to have it in the mode one. And then this side here is now set to spring. Now, before you put the back on, you can adjust the spring tensions if you want to now as well. This one up here is adjusted for the vertical up and down. And then this one here is for the right hand side, left and right. However, you can simply use the holes in the back of the RC as well. You don't have to do it at this point. There are push through points that you can actually do under the rubber flaps and do it then. But that is the basics for converting it over. So now we simply just put the remote back together, reversed of what we did. So we need to reconnect the battery connector, put it back together, put all the screws back in place and the conversion is done on the hardware and then we simply need to change the software over to mode one. Now, when you fit this cable back on, you need to make sure that it actually goes down this sides down here in these little grooves and along the bottom, just to make sure that it doesn't get in the way of the main RC bits when you're actually connecting it back up. Something else to be aware of is watch these two power cables for the main cooling fan located down here by one of the back screw bosses. Now, when you put the remote together, you need to make sure that these are out the way. Otherwise, they are very easy to damage and actually get caught between the top and bottom frame. And if you do that, it will mean your fan won't work and your remote controller will overheat. Now, as you're putting it back together, the first thing you need to do is make sure you do get these bottom ports in the correct position. Now, make sure that you to do it, you sort of slide it in and up like that. So what we're going to do is drop it in place. You can see that the bottom all locks in and then you simply gently push it around, give it a press in at the top and the remote locks in and you're then ready to put all of the screws in all the way around. 
Now to change the mode over in the software, you simply need to go down into settings, go down into remote controller, click on that, go into the main control menu and click on stick mode. In here, you're able to set it to mode one or mode two, but again, you do need to do the hardware mod as well to change which stick is actually sprung. Once you've done that, I would highly recommend doing a calibration on the remote controller after doing it, just to make sure all of the endpoints are correctly set and the remote is gonna behave as you would expect it to. Just to quickly show you the kind of damage you can do if you get this wrong, this is the cable here that I have ended up damaging. It is this small ribbon cable that runs from the main board down here to the top switchboard. Now, I actually had to take this remote controller apart anyway because we damaged one of the switches on the top because one of my kids accidentally pushed it off the table. However, what actually happened was I was doing it, setting everything up to be able to show this to you guys anyway, and it ended up slipping whilst I was doing up one of the screws in the repair. Now, unfortunately, it's one of those things that happens. It does happen from time to time when you do stuff like this, so you just have to take it on the nose. However, please do be aware if you're going to do the mod on this, take great care and be very aware of all of the thin cables, the ribbon cables, as well as that power cable that I mentioned down here as well. And that is it for this video. Hopefully the information has been helpful. Again, be very, very careful when doing this mod. You could get yourself into quite a lot of trouble. If it has been helpful, please do subscribe to the channel. There is a link in the description of this video as well to the DJI Digital FPV system if you would like to support us too. That's it. Thank you for watching and I will do another video again soon.